Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Akakudash, the Buanas of the Apostles, and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there doing his work of faith and live with love and true sincerity. All right, now we're going to get into a quick lesson entitled The Commonwealth of Israel. All right, and this uh, starts off with, I'm going to start off with the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. And I'm going to start at uh, verse 11, and it says, <clears throat> Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision, and the flesh made by hands. So what we're getting into is dealing with the Israelite foreigners. You know, because we had the Jews in the land, and the, and the, the Jews, the ones of our people, who knew that they were Israelites that were following the law, statutes, and commandments, you know, they were considering the ones of our people outside of the land and following the ways of the Greeks or whatever land in which they were from, they were considering them Gentiles, you know, that's just like us today, you know, before we came into the truth, we were back in our, our Gentilish uh, frame of mind, you know, where Israelites, according to the spirit, you know, uh, and according to to our lineages, you know, but what we were in a Gentile frame of mind. So that's the same thing that was happening, you know, uh, you know, back then, you know, the people that were in the in the land of Greece or in the land of Rome or in Africa or whatever they had may have been, you know. So they were called uncircumcision, you know, by the ones that had circumcision, the ones of our people that were dwelling in the land. And when you take a look at the book of uh, Jeremiah, because, you know, uh, the Lord spoke about this right here. This is uh, Jeremiah <clears throat> um, 9 and 25. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. Okay, so in this instance, the Lord, you know, in the Old Testament, the Lord was referring to, to our people, because what we were always circumcised, you know, by the eighth day, according to the laws, with the uncircumcised in this situation, he's actually talking, referring to the actual heathens, you know, verse 26, it says, Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised. Why? Because they didn't practice the law, statutes, and commandments. They didn't <laughs> circumcise their people. You know, things like that, right? And all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in their heart. Okay, so this wasn't, um, you know, a thing of, you know, back then that our people weren't physically circumcised. It wasn't about that. The Lord is saying, like, you uncircumcised in your heart, meaning you not follow my ways that I have ordained for you. So that's the same thing going in accordance with what we just grabbed in Ephesians and while the people of the land, you know, that knew they were Jews, that were practicing the law, statutes and commandments called our people that were outside of the land. Uh, they were calling them Gentiles. They was calling them uncircumcised because why they were acting in the ways of the heathen because the Lord clearly say here <laughs> that what uh, the Egypt, Egypt, Edom, you know, uh, Ammon, Moab, all these other nations that they were uncircumcised by the <clears throat> by their general state. So in today's time, our people are acting the same exact way, and you have to know this because what history repeats itself. You know, um, I hope I uh, conveyed that point clear. Um, <clears throat> so going back to Ephesians, right? So Ephesians 2 and 11 again, wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision and the flesh made by hands that at that time ye were without Yahweh being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without the Mosiah in the world. So. You know what, in t and it ref gave reference to what in the times past that they were Gentiles in the flesh and and spiritually and and mentally. Okay, 
because why they weren't practicing the law, statutes, commandments. But what we are at this point, you know, Paul was establishing them to them that what it's all about faith. And remember, before you came into this faith, you know, you were in a Gentile frame of mind. So that's the thing with us being in this truth that we cannot forget. You know, we were once in that frame of mind. And that's how you got to think about it when you're dealing with a lot of these people out here. And at the same time, the Lord clearly let us know that majority of our people ain't going to get it anyway. You know? So during that time, what we were uh, uh, <clears throat> um, strangers from all of the gifts and the promises that the Most High has to offer us, that he is still offering us as a people. And this is what our people fail to realize, that the commonwealth you know, belongs unto us. That commonwealth is all of the, the treasures of heaven, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding of these scriptures, the inheritance of the earth, the inheritance of the world that is to come. But they don't want to be a part of it. Our people want to remain in the into that, in that uh, Gentile frame of mind and be uncircumcised within their minds, you know, and they they thinking that they supposed to have the commonwealth of today of what Esau has, you know, but there is no commonwealth with Esau, man. You know, they have commonwealth states in which they set up to lock Jacob, right? And to make more money off of it. So they throw more time on you, et cetera, et cetera, like that. But we talking about real common, the real commonwealth, the wealth that's of substance, man. You know, money isn't necessarily substance, you know, and especially when it's definitely when it's not backed by gold, like how it used to be. You know, gold was a source of substance. This truth is gold. This is a source of substance. This is our common wealth with the Lord and the faith in which we have within the Lord. Right. Um. So getting into that common wealth of Israel said what? And strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope without the most high in the world. So those covenants of promise, who does that all belong to? And Paul spoke about that also in um. The book of Romans, Romans 9, Romans 9 and 1. Uh, I say the truth in Yahweh Shah, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from the Lord for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of the of the Mosa and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Yahweh Shah came, who was who was over all, God bless forever to wow. Okay, so this is what it's all getting into, man. This is exactly what it's all getting into. All right. And uh, when you read verse six, it says, Not as though the word of the Most High have taken an effect, for they are for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Okay, meaning what? That everybody that's of um, the, the, the heritage of Israel, everybody's not chosen. You have a chosen with inside of that chosen, you know? And it's always been like that. But at the end of the day, it's all about Israel, you know? That's who the Lord is for. The commonwealth, the riches, the services, the giving of the law. Uh, everything that the Lord has to offer belongs unto who? Unto us. And another another quick example, still in the book of Romans, you know, still touching on what the, the Gentiles, because that's what this chapter is mainly about, right? Um, is uh, Gen uh, Romans 11 and 25. For I will not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So the Lord made the Jews in the land, the ones that were doing everything by the Lord, the physically circumcised, etc., etc. He made them blind in part to the faith of the Lord so that. So that faith could be offered unto the Gentiles. And now, you know, he provoked uh, uh, one set of people to, to emulation against another set of people. But to bring in the fullness of our people and to bring the fullness of the understanding within these scriptures. And at the same time, the Lord doing all of this, the Lord left the trail 
of, of mystery for the masses of the world, including unto today. Why? Because the Lord didn't want everyone to get his mysteries, man. Truly the Lord doeth nothing, but he revealeth his servant his, his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, man. So the Lord done these is what I like to call like the, the man of the uh, the manifold ways of the Lord. You know, because the Lord did this in such a great fashion, you know, by wording this this way to disguise people to actually think that, okay, the Lord is looking for the Gentiles. The Lord is looking for the Gentiles. No, the Lord is looking for his lost sheep, Israel, you know, Israel. And that's it. And when you get into the Zondervan Bible, it, Bible dictionary, it tells you Gentiles, meaning usually a non, a, a, a non, a, he, Usually a non-Israelite people, or roughly paraphrasing it, you know, or usually a heathen people. Usually, meaning not all the time. So it all belongs unto Israel, man. There is no other nation that is a part of the covenants and the different things in which we have, man. Everything of the Lord that the Lord gave, that the Lord set forth in motion, is for Israel. This world that is now is for Esau, but everything that is to come is for us. And we're being prepared through Esau being a whooping stick and the signs and the times and everything that's going on now for the world that is to come, man. You know? So, you know, that, that commonwealth is special. You know, uh, we got to take heed of that, that we are a part of the commonwealth of Israel. Because when you look up, you know, the word commonwealth, What is the Commonwealth? An independent country or community, especially a democratic party, right? An aggregate or grouping of countries or other bodies, a community or organization of shared interest in a non-political field, a self-governing unit, voluntarily group, so on and so forth. You get the picture. It's a community, a group or organization of shared interest. What is our shared interest? That we are Israelites, that everything of the Lord pertains to us. That's why we, you know, as so-called Black Suspenders and Native Americans of today are of the line of Israel. We are Israelites and we share in that commonwealth that the Lord has passed down unto us from generation to generation to generation, starting off with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. So, um, you know, with that. You know, I hope this segment was edifying. And I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwadash, the Buanas of the Apostles in the Elves of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lekabdir, doing his work of faith and labor of love and true sincerity. Shalom.